Hello and welcome to Rando Rob. Uh, this is the show where I, Rob, uh, grab random things from my collection and show them to you. As I like to say, I have the hard part of picking one of thousands of uh, unique, special, weird uh, items that I own. And you got the easy part. All you got to do is click on the YouTube video. You can see them. <laughs> it's very easy. for you. Your part's very easy. Uh, on um, this episode, by the way, this is episode 100 of Rando Rob. So if you haven't been here from the beginning and you haven't seen the old episodes, just as a reminder, this is a show that I started doing uh, as a, a special reward for my Patreon supporters. And it kind of grew out of that. And so now it is expanded. It's available uh, both in audio and video formats if you want to watch the episodes so you can actually see the items and see me gesturing with my hands as I frequently do, as I just did three times in a row. Uh, then you can go to youtube.com forward slash Rob O'Hara, and there is a playlist for Rando Rob. And so what I am doing is on Mondays, I release a new episode of Rando Rob, and then Tuesday through Friday, I am uploading uh, all the old back episodes. Uh, so you can watch all the episodes if you weren't a Patreon supporter. But what better time to get in than right now <laughs> to jump on that Patreon train at patreon.com forward slash Rob O'Hara. Um, but if you weren't a Patreon supporter during uh, all those years, then um, uh, you can see the old episodes as they're being posted. If you would rather listen to them during your day, if you're working and you're driving and you're like, you know what would make this drive so much better is listening to the weird, odd, and strange things that Rob O'Hara has purchased in his lifetime and still owns. Uh, then you can uh, either subscribe to it by itself. There is a uh, list on uh, Apple Podcasts for Rando Rob, or there is a feed called, um, I think it's called, I want to say Rob Casts or Rob, I don't know. It's called something. You'll find it. <laughs> but it's a feed that has all my podcasts. I think it's Rob O'Hara podcast. It has all my podcasts funneled into one thing. So maybe you don't want to subscribe to You Don't Know Flack and Sprite Castle and Rando Rob separately. You just want it all. You want it all. It's just like a buffet. You sign up, you get it all. Uh, that's the way to do that. You can also go to podcast.robohara.com and you can see all the individual episodes. If you just want to listen to one, check it out. Uh, you can do that as well. All right, enough plugs out of the way. Uh, for the 100th episode, I have dug something out. This is something uh, that hangs on the wall. I have not hung it on the wall in our new house, but I went out to the garage and saw this and thought, I'm immediately, I'm bringing this into the house. I'm going to do this for the 100th episode of Rando Rob. And uh, when I'm done with this episode, I'm going to hang it on the wall. <laughs> I'm going to spot right next to where I sit. Um, you know, I, I've struggled over the years because I own more things than I can have on display. I own more things than I have shelf space. I own uh, more items, more posters than I have walls and more paintings than I have walls and more action figures than I have shelves. And so it just can't all go out, which breaks my heart because to me, uh, collectibles and toys and action figures and all this stuff that I own is no good. If I can't see it, I don't enjoy it. I don't like having stuff like that in storage boxes. As I've mentioned before, I have another dozen 30 gallon storage totes out in the garage full of star Wars stuff that I don't necessarily have room uh, for in the collection here. Now, what I'm thinking about doing, um, and not to be labor, cause I want to get to this idea. Um, but over on the shelves that are on this wall that you can't see, if you're listening, you can't see any of the shelves, <laughs> but if you're watching, you definitely can't see, uh, these shelves to the right, but I have three sets of Billy bookshelves from Ikea, all with the extenders. And then I have four sets behind me also with the extenders, but the ones uh, that are to my right, a lot of the shelves are just kind of filled with stuff. Like I filled them just to put stuff on them. So like there's a couple of two whole shelves of like Star Wars books and stuff, but they're not great books. They're just kind of shelf filler stuff, you know? So I'm thinking about um, taking some of that stuff down and putting more toys and collectibles and things like that stuff that would be more fun uh, to look at on a daily basis. And um, speaking of fun things to look at at a daily on a daily basis, um, 
artwork is like the worst thing. If you store it away, you just forget about it. It does nobody any good, you know, especially if it's uh, something original. And today's item is a 100% original painting. So let's go back five, 10 years. Uh, and um, I, I've told this story on podcasts before, but uh, the the summary of how I got started collecting lunch boxes was uh, I owned a couple of lunch boxes from my childhood. I owned my Empire Strikes Back red plastic lunch box. I think I owned a Star Wars lunch box that was also uh, from my childhood. And uh, maybe I had one or two other lunch boxes, but I was not a lunch box collector. But I had these shelves that I had built at one point in time for DVDs. And the DVD, my DVD collection outgrew the shelves. So then I had these shelves that I had built and painted and, and put a lot of work into, but uh, I had to buy more DVD shelves. And then eventually I got rid of my DVDs. So uh, I didn't have anything for the, the shelves, no use for the shelves, but I discovered that lunchboxes fit on it perfectly. And in fact, if I remember right, it held uh, five lunchboxes across and it was four shelves high. So it would, in theory, hold 20 uh, lunchboxes and there was enough space in between each one to to uh, pull out the thermos and put it on display. Didn't have as many spaces for thermoses as lunch boxes, but that's okay because when you start buying lunch boxes, you discover that many of them don't have the thermoses. Also, a few times in uh, thrift stores, I have found thermoses that I never found lunch boxes for. I have a Nestle Quick thermos. I assume it goes with a lunch box. I, I, if I've looked it up, I've forgotten, but I have a Nestle Quick chocolate, you know, it has the chocolate Nestle Quick bunny on a thermos, but I don't have a lunchbox or uh, to go with that. I also have a thermos for the last starfighter, but I don't have the last starfighter lunchbox. So there are a few that I have that I have thermoses that I would display in between the lunchboxes. Anyway, so I started collecting lunchboxes in earnest uh, a little over 10 years ago, maybe around 2010. 2010 ish. That that would be a guess. 2011, something like that. Uh, I started buying lunch boxes just because I had shelves that I discovered were the right size to hold lunch boxes, and I already had a couple, so I put those on the shelves. And then I thought, well, I'm gonna buy a few lunch boxes. And then when I say buy a few lunch boxes, now I have like 40 or 50, something like that. I have two in a bag down here that I haven't even, um, a friend of mine was on vacation and said, Hey, do you have these two lunch boxes? And I said, no. And he bought them and, uh, they're, and he gave them to me in a sack and they're still in the sack. I looked at them and I go, Oh, those are cool. But I haven't, uh, because I, I got to climb up on a ladder because the, the shelves for lunch boxes are very high. Um, but, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but the point is, uh, 2010, 2011, somewhere around then is when I started, uh, really collecting lunch boxes. And there, there's two types of ways to collect things, and I've done both. So, for example, when I was buying arcade games, I had a list of these are my holy grail arcade games. I really want to own Karate Champ. I really want to own 720, and I did own both of those games eventually. But there were games that I specifically wanted to own. And then on the other hand, I was the list of, I will buy any game for a hundred dollars or less, which is how I ended up with scramble. And I've talked about this Scramble's not a game that I'm good at. It's not really a game that I like, but I found a working scramble arcade game, uh, in essentially mint condition for $25 at an auction. And so that's why I own scramble or did own scramble. Uh, so <clears throat> when I started with the lunch boxes, I didn't have any, and so I wasn't in the the phase of buy anything if it's cheap enough. I was in the phase of what are the lunch boxes that I want to own? What are the ones that I want to track down? Of course, the Star Wars ones were high on that list. Uh, there's only so many different Star Wars ones, five or six different designs, you know. So it's it's not hard to collect them all. It's not that expensive to collect them all. I wanted the Pac Man lunchbox. I wanted the E. T lunchbox. I wanted the Dragon's Lair lunchboxes. Those are all iconic lunchboxes from my youth uh, that I remember either I had or a friend had or something. And they're really, um, they're iconic because they're lunchboxes, but also because they they represent, I mean, like Pac-Man 
you know, was a thing <laughs> in the early 80s. There was Pac-Man everything, Pac-Man songs and shirts and toys and all that, and, um, and Pac-Man lunchboxes. So it makes it cool, right? So one of the lunchboxes that went on that early list was the Gremlins lunchbox. Now, I loved the movie Gremlins. Gremlins came out in 1984. I'm assuming if you are have made it this far into the video uh, and you've watched me and you've listened to my podcast, you probably have seen Gremlins. You probably enjoyed Gremlins. I enjoyed Gremlins. Uh, it was a great movie. Um, it, it pushed the, um, you know, it was kind of horror, but kind of action, kind of uh, adventure kind of, you know, um, and plus, as a kid who grew up loving special effects, uh, it was a great movie because you were like, how did they get the Mogwai to do that? How did they get Gizmo to do that? How did they do this with the, the Gremlins, you know? So there were, um, but but there were parts that were kind of scary, you know, um, when they put a Gremlin in the microwave and, and cooked it, <laughs> it was kind of scary. So uh, Gremlins was on my, like I, I set off, like I made a top 10 list of lunchboxes. Like these are the top 10 lunchboxes I want to own. Gremlins was on that list. And so uh, there was a couple of local places that had lunchboxes and they were super expensive. So I started looking online uh, for those, you know, to, to start off that collection of ones that I wanted. And one day I was searching for uh, lunchboxes online and I typed in Gremlins Lunchbox, and a hit came up t that pointed me to Etsy. Now, people sell regular stuff on Etsy all the time. I mean, I, I thought Etsy was only for homemade things and crafts and stuff. I shared them. If you didn't see it, I think I have them right down here. My um, uh, Cloak and Dagger uh, guys, uh, my little felt Cloak and Dagger guys. There's Jack Flack right there. Uh, that I'm showing on screen. If you're listening, uh, this is a, a, a tiny little uh, cloth fabric stuffed uh, Jack Flack. And I got um, um, the uh, Henry Thomas one around here somewhere too. Here he is. <coughs> Flack to Lady Ace. Come in, Lady Ace. Uh, these were, uh, the, the, I found the seller on Twitter, but but she has a Etsy store. And so that's what I thought Etsy was, was just, uh, you know, homemade crafts and things like that. But, um, I've also found just a lot of regular stuff for sale on Etsy. Just people just buy retro things and they just put it on Etsy to sell. So, uh, I wasn't totally surprised when Etsy came up as a link when I typed in, uh, that I was searching for a gremlins lunchbox, but when I, a lunchbox, but when I clicked on the link, it was not a gremlins lunchbox. The title said a painting of a gremlin's lunchbox. I was so intrigued by that, that I knew two things were going to happen. Number one, I immediately had to click on that link and see <laughs> who would paint a gremlin's lunchbox, a picture. This is not a lunchbox that has been painted. This is a painting of a gremlin's lunchbox. Uh, and number two, if it was remotely affordable, I knew that I would own a one-of-a-kind custom painting of a Gremlins lunchbox. And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the 100th episode of Rando Rob, I give to you, <laughs> this is a, uh, and I've got a little bit of a, a glare, so I'm going to tilt it just a little bit there. Uh, this is an oil painting on canvas of a gremlin's lunchbox. Now, um, if you've seen a gremlin's lunchbox, you know that on the main uh, side, or on one side, I should say, because I, I shouldn't really uh, judge one side over the other, um, you have uh, Gizmo, the Mogwai, and then you have uh, Billy, along with, uh, I, I mean, I believe it's also Gizmo, but it could be a different Mogwai, I guess. And Billy and the other uh, Mogwai are, um, the other Mogwai is in the Oriental or, uh, um, yeah, I guess Oriental Asian uh, box, the gift box that Billy uh, purchased him in from the uh, mystical store that he brought him home in. Now, the Gremlins lunchbox had uh, the word Gremlins 
uh, in the font of the, the movie poster in blue, and then it had red around the edge. So as you can see, this is a three-dimensional painting. Well, I mean, it's a painting, but the lunchbox is um, at just a bit of an angle so that you could see it's a lunchbox. And, and obviously, whoever painted this painting, you can see that they um, actually had one because... As you know, these um, metal, um, I said metal weird, uh, these metal uh, lunchboxes from uh, Aladdin, who usually made them, uh, they had artwork all the way around the sides, and you can see uh, that the uh, artwork uh, on the sides also appears there. Uh, you have the main painting, and then it is on a very, very strange uh, black and white checkered background that seems to defy any particular uh, rules that might be in our dimension. Uh, I mean, at first it looks like it's on a tablecloth, but then it kind of goes into a weird angle. It's just a, a almost an abstract uh, background. But there you go. There is a uh, oil painting. Now, if I remember correctly, I'd have to go check my records. But this, I believe, was twenty dollars. It might have been less than that, but I it was no more than twenty dollars. Uh, and I immediately clicked buy it now. I was like, this is something that I must own and I will own for the rest of my life. And sure enough, here we are, uh, 10, 12 years later, I still own it and, uh, I will own it. Uh, I promise you, I will own this forever. Now, uh, as you can see, if you're watching the video, it is in a frame that has a, uh, glass, um, uh, cover on the front. I don't know what you call it. A picture frame, uh, with a, uh, black wooden, uh, frame that goes around it. This did not come in this frame. It was not framed. And in fact, uh, if you look on the back, you will see that the canvas is very thick and the canvas does not actually fit, uh, all the way in the frame. So when I hang it on the wall, uh, it sits away from the wall about half an inch, which is fine. Um, but, uh, uh, I, I've, I've talked about this theory before. This is a theory that came from my father, which was uh, once you have paid uh, a certain amount for something, you should not pay more than that same amount for the same item, uh, which sometimes uh, is um, uh, you, you have to take quality into account as well. For example, uh, I used to buy baseball hats, which I wear. I have a ton of baseball hats. And I used to buy them at the mall for like fifteen to twenty dollars. Then uh, we went to a flea market one time, and they were three or four for ten. So they're like two fifty each, three dollars each. And so now, when I go to the mall and I see baseball hats for thirty dollars, I go, I can't do it. I can't spend thirty dollars because I know that if I go to the flea market, I can get them for three bucks, <laughs> right? So once I went to a garage sale and saw people selling paintings for a buck or less, 50 cents, or go to a thrift store, any thrift store in the world has a big thing of paintings or, and posters and all that kind of stuff, and you could get them for just a dollar or less, you know? And so that's what I did. I literally went to either a thrift store or garage sale. I don't remember, but I remember I, I got it for a quarter. Uh, and so I got this uh, uh, frame for a quarter. There was some sort of picture in it. I came home, I pulled the picture out, threw it away, um, and, and I forget what size this canvas is. Is this, uh, uh, looks like maybe a six by nine. No, it's big, bigger than that. Uh, eight by 10, maybe an eight by 10 canvas. That looks about right. Um, but, uh, whatever it was, uh, I found the frame and it's the, the exact right size for the frame. And so it just slides right in there. In fact, it's just kind of, it wedges in and it, it's held in with, with friction. It's never, it doesn't move or come out or anything like that. Uh, I can't express how much I love this painting. <laughs> and, you know, people, uh, art, first of all, art, you know, like beauty, art is in the eye of the beholder. And, uh, you know, I have gone to art museums and uh, we just went to an art museum, a local art museum, and they had a Rembrandt. And it was roped off and people were just staring at this painting, you know, in my mind, they're just staring at it for hours and, and, and worshiping the master. And, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that you could do at art. You could look at art and you could just master or, you know, just wonder about the technique. You could just, uh, uh, just, 
look at the lighting and the shading and, and the actual painting technique and just and just imagine how much work went into it. And that's one way to appreciate art, you know, and another, but it's, it's, what do you get out of art? And for me, for something like this, when I look at it, I mean, you know, obviously the background is goofy. The, the, um, black and white uh, checkerboard pattern is kind of goofy. Again, I'm kind of moving it around oddly in front of the camera, just uh, to, to avoid the glare here. Um, but, uh, every time I look at this, it makes me, I just looked at it again. It makes me laugh. I think some, not just someone had, uh, someone had a gremlin's lunchbox, but then they wanted to paint the gremlin's lunchbox and put, put this little custom background behind it. Um, and it just makes me laugh so much. And if, if you get that out of art, then, uh, I mean, to me that qualifies as art. That's great. And, uh, I absolutely love this thing. I absolutely love it. Uh, I, I feel like it's a shame that's been out in my garage for the past couple of years and not hanging up. I'm definitely going to hang it up uh, the minute I hit stop recording on this so that I can walk by and look at it every single day. I love it so much. Uh, so, w you know, one of the, the great things about um, being a, a collector, I have a lot of stuff that millions of people had like i have a lot of the vintage star wars action figures um you know the the ones from the late 70s early 80s but guess what millions of people have those and they're all over you know and they're more expensive now than they were back in the day but um so i enjoy that collection because it was mine as a kid but it's not terribly unique and all those the toys that i have on the shelves back there are um you know, mass produced things. So there are things I enjoy. They remind me of things, but they're not like unique pieces. But, um, when, when you start getting into paintings and I only have a few original artwork pieces, but, uh, the ones I have are all like, I treasure them so much because, um, they're, first of all, I, I mean, they're, they're unique, right? Like that. I promise you, nobody else has this painting. <laughs> Why would they? <laughs> Nobody else says this thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, but the other thing is, is that when I look at it, like I only buy things that I enjoy looking at. You know what I mean? Like it, it's not a, it's not designed to fit a motif, although it fits this motif, whatever my motif is, it, it certainly fits that. But, um, you know, it, it's not like to match things in a room or for, you know, a vibe or or, you know, I watch these um, home improvement shows and they stage a room and they just bring in some generic picture of sunflowers or this, that, and they go, oh, yeah, it's the right color. It's not that. Uh, I don't I don't buy artwork for that. Every piece of artwork that I buy, and like I said, I only have a few, but all the ones that I've bought um, are just things that I absolutely adore. And I absolutely adore this one. And you know what else? I, abso uh, I absolutely adore blowing the final sentence of a podcast. <laughs> That's one thing I absolutely love. But you know what else I absolutely love? <sighs> you. I love you guys. Uh, there would not be 100 episodes of Rando Rob if it weren't for you. There would not be hundreds, multiple hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of podcast episodes if it weren't for listeners and viewers and supporters like you. So thanks everybody for watching another episode of Rando Rob or listening to another episode of Rando Rob again, uh, later on in the week, we will have episodes. I think it's 45 through 48. So eventually we will catch up to, uh, the modern ones and then, and then the pace will slow down a little bit. But, uh, um, until that happens, um, hang on for the ride. Cause there's going to be a lot of stuff. Also, <clears throat> if you want to follow along my van adventures, because now I'm one of those weirdos that wants to hang out inside a van, uh, not to pass out candy to children, but to drive around and camp. Uh, so if you want to follow that, uh, go to YouTube and it's YouTube forward slash. And then it's the at symbol, big Rob's van. And, uh, there's a, the first episode of big Rob's van is already out. And the second one will be out hopefully this Friday. Um, I'm working on converting the van and turning it into a sleeper, camper type situation. So, uh, that that's good fun. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening to this episode of Rando Rob. Uh, there'll be more episodes along the way this week. Take care, everybody.